have you ever felt? Are you listening? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage. Behind me is a 2017 Honda Civic Type R. And I've realized that the prices are starting to go down on the used Type R, so we're gonna have a lot of buyers in the, on the market nowadays. So I figured it would be a great idea to revisit this review. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So if you haven't seen my review already on the Civic Type R, be sure to check that out in the link below. But this one's just gonna be a quick summary, a little, here's the wham bam, thank you ma'am, overall review of the Civic Type R and what you guys need to know. So I'm gonna start with the outside. One of the things that is notorious when we talk about the Civic Type R, and it's that a lot of people think that it looks crazy and ridiculous like a transformer, but then there are those that think that it looks beautiful and it's a work of art. And I'm right there in the middle. I'm, quite, I'm kind of torn, but I'd say that it looks like it runs on Red Bull and Monsters. But overall, it's a good looking car. This is my favorite view right here. It looks mean, aggressive, and I think for the next like 10 years, this is gonna be timeless. One of the best things about the community for the Type R is that the aftermarket is plentiful. These wheels, aftermarket, and there are a million different combinations of wheels and tire setups and everything that you can run on these. So all you gotta do is join the Type R forums and look what other people are running and ask questions, right? As for this view right here, you'll notice that there is a large rear wing. And again, controversial subject. Some people hate it, some people love it. For this car, it belongs there. So I've had the pleasure of babysitting this Type R for about two months now. I've got it for another couple more months. I've learned a couple tricks that I wanna share with you guys. I love this, that manufacturers make it so that you can easily put your windows down. The only downside to the Civic is the way that they make it so you put the windows up is you actually have to get this key from your fob, place this gently in there, hit it twice, your windows will actually start going right back up. As for the back of the Type R, it looks good. Red Honda badge, red accents all over the car, inside of the car, which we'll get to in a little bit. But I love that it's got the third wiper blade. That's always a cool handy thing. And then we'll pop this little hatch back and take a look on the inside. Since we're in the year 2019 and a lot of auto manufacturers don't give you a spare tire anymore, Honda's got you covered because you do have a little tire inflator kit. Before I get into the back of this, I'm gonna explain that there's a lot of room back here because it is a hatchback, it's very practical, great daily car. I will now demonstrate the practicality of this back cargo space. As you can see, if I had a twin, we could both comfortably fit right here. He could sit there, I could sit here, and we could stare at each other. So let's say that you have a, I don't know, a cupcake delivery business or something like that, and you need more space. Honda's got you covered. All you do is you just flip these seats back. Well, that one's supposed to fall back too. We're just gonna forget about that. But these fold flat and now you've got all the storage space. You can fit four full tires back here for your drag strip days or your track days, whatever it may be. So it's very practical. Before I hop in the back seat, I wanna show you guys real quick. You do get options like keyless entry. So you just put your hand in there, everything unlocks, and then you can just push the button to lock it. But I'll just slide in here real quick. Ugh. Ugh. Well, you can see this seat is set for someone that's like six foot two and uh, I'm out of space. But if I were nice, I could just kind of do this and there's comfortably enough room now or whatever. But what you can do is you can go to adjust it. That's right, manual seats. So that's one of the trade-offs with the Type R. Take two. So now we've adjusted the seat and now this is set for someone about five, nine, five, ten, six foot tall, somewhere in that range. And as you can see over here, I've got plenty of leg room. This is great for like a long trip or so. I've got cup holders back here. No climate vents or anything special or fancy. No chargers, no outlets, but really the Civic Type R has this back seat in case you have to put kids or dogs. It's not really for luxury or anything like that. For my longtime subscribers, they know that I'm about 5'9". For you guys that are new to the channel, I'm 5'9 for the record. And uh, I'm comfortable back here. And if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing if you enjoy automotive content. One of the things that I have an issue with, and there's really not a whole lot Honda can do about this one, but luckily there is the aftermarket. You've got your triple tips right here. But the thing is, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner on steroids. So the sound is not one of my favorites. But that is of course, just my opinion. So take a listen for yourself. So let's talk numbers for a second. Under the hood is a two liter four cylinder. This makes 306 horsepower, 295 foot pounds of torque, and it's able to do zero to 16 about 4.9 seconds. This gets about 22 miles per gallon in the city and about 28 gallons on the highway. 
The downside to it, which for you commuters, is gonna be that it only has about a 12 gallon tank. The good thing about the Civic is at the end of the day, it's a Honda. So reliability, it's not really a huge concern. There are only three big issues that I've been able to find and they're not really major, but one of them is overheating. The other one is a transmission rev matching issue. And then the last one you hear about is gonna be your gears grinding from like second to third gear, but there are different fixes for those. Um, so just do your research and make sure you're educated before you jump into one of these. All right, let's play a game really quick down in the comment section below. Kill one, marry one, date one, because we won't use inappropriate words on this channel. So you've got the Civic Type R, we've got the WRX STI, and then let's throw in the Focus RS. Let me know what you guys would do down below. All right, so that's about it for the outside of the car. The rest of it is some little issues I have with the interior. I'm gonna take it for a drive and give you some of my thoughts on that. But if you want a more in-depth review, be sure to check out a video I did on the Civic Type R when it first was released back in the day. Otherwise, just keep watching. My first issue is that you've got these large side skirts right here. So it's kind of a tripping hazard. And I'm not just saying that in like a, if you're clumsy sense, but you kind of have to remember that they're there. Otherwise you're walking and you can trip and it ends in a really bad day for you. Here's my foot for comparison. You can see how deep these side skirts are. The next thing I want to point out is these bolsters, they're huge. So as you can see, this one only has a couple thousand miles on it. And these bolsters are already starting to wear out because every time you get in, you have to step over them, sit down into the seat and fall in. But when you get out, if you don't do that, you just kind of drag and you'll eventually beat up those bolsters. This thing is no slouch. And uh, if you think for a minute that when you hear two liter, it's so oh, just a T liter, no, nothing like that. The Civic Type R hauls ass. Because it's only front wheel drive, you don't get the cool fun of kind of sliding the back end in the same way you do with a rear wheel drive car. But you get fun in a different kind of way and it feels so good. The rev matching is spot on and it's downshift rev matching that is. And when you put this thing in Type R mode or R plus, it feels phenomenal. This transmission is one of the easiest transmissions I've ever driven. The gas mileage issue, because it's only like 22 average is what you're going to be seeing, you're probably going to be filling up quite a bit. This isn't a large gas tank at all, so expect like maybe 250 to 300 miles per tank, and that can be a downside for a lot of you. Handling, superb. The wheels on this, great. Tires, great. Everything on this setup works magical on the road. I don't know. I can't think of a better way to describe it other than Honda's got a recipe for success and this front wheel drive car gives a lot of all wheel drive cars a run for their money. As for driving every day, if you're on the larger side, you may not like these sport seats because these are kind of designed for the smaller framed people. Um, I'm kind of right on the line and I'm really not even that big of a person. But I feel like if you are someone that likes extra grease on your burgers, then these seats might not be the best thing for you. I haven't been fortunate enough to be able to take one of these on a track, but I know some spirited driving, some back roads, all of that good stuff. The brakes, fantastic. Um, no brake fade, nothing like that. And you can pretty much stop on a dime. If you bought one of these and it was a 2017, you wouldn't feel like you're missing out on a whole lot. And it's even got a wireless charging pad, which is a plus because even a lot of high-end cars nowadays don't come with that but for Honda it's 350 bucks and you've got a wireless charging pad so that's kind of hard to beat the plastics on the steering wheel also drive me crazy they don't feel good at all I wish that Honda would have just used like traditional regular buttons instead of these weird little plastic ones I feel like they're gonna fall apart in your hand but I do love the digital display it shows your audio and everything like that and it shows you what gear you're in so that's a nice touch there one of the features I want to talk about is brake hold, and it's awesome. I wish all the cars came with it. And what it is, so you're on a hill or you're stopped at a drive through and you don't want to keep your foot on the brake. You just tap the brake one time. It'll hold the brakes until you hit the gas or do something to make the car start moving again. I love it. If you have the pleasure of being able to drive one of these, you'll quickly realize what I mean when I say how easy this transmission is to drive. And the rev matching, all of it, it's gonna it's gonna make you look like a really great driver and so if you're trying to impress the ladies i always tell you this is the car to do it in overall i gotta say that i would strongly recommend keeping the type r on your list if not moving it up a couple notches uh, some of the pros the drivability the practicality the price point that it comes in at on the used market 
The ability to get relatively good gas mileage, I would say, 28 miles per gallon on the highway, so great for long road trips. But the small tank is actually one of the trade-offs to that. The other issue is I don't really care for the interior, unless your favorite color is red. Honda's got you covered there as well. There's really not a whole lot to hate. And you can go on the forums, talk to all the Honda guys, and they'll tell you that this is an awesome car. It's a great investment. One of the downsides to this Honda infotainment system is it kind of feels like when Android first came out, it's got this infotainment setup and it's just weird buttons and I feel like it could be better. Thank you guys so much for checking out yet another episode in LJ's Garage. Be sure to hit that like button, the comment button, and let me know down below what you guys think of the Civic Type R and if there's anything else that I missed on the pros and cons list. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode.